got involved with this, uh, I found out about the Pledge of Science a year ago, and I knew it went real well. And we want to definitely bring this back, and we want this to be an annual event. Uh, you know, I can only speak from my own history. Uh, I would have probably never gotten involved in this if it weren't for these gentlemen at this table and their teammates and the history of San Diego soccer. It brought tremendous joy to my family and to myself and to a lot of our friends that uh, attended. And uh, some of the great sports memories uh, are in this building. And that's why we wanted to have this press conference. We basically grew up here at the San Diego Sports Arena watching these soccer players go about what we know as a piece of magic. You guys remember that, right? But uh, what we wanted to do, and John brought this up when we brought up Legends Night, is we felt that it's time to reconnect with the soccer, the original soccer. And we can't have this version of the San Diego soccer going forward without the foundation of this version of the San Diego soccer. It's just that for me, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good fit. So we said, no, we're going to do something here. And the, and the one team that um, the one team that stuck out to me was the one for the thumb team, not because of the goofy video they did, but how they went about winning that championship that year. Um, some people might remember that you know the soccer had won 25 straight home playoff games before they lost in game two of the finals to the Minnesota Strikers. In fact, they went down three games to one. And this soccer team, I believe you guys went to against Kansas City in the conference finals. You guys got beat up a little bit, bruised up. There was a guy, just guys that couldn't play. And uh, I believe it was uh, Hugo Perez was all bandaged up. I think uh, Julie was injured. I think even Gene Woolwich was injured at the time. So, you know, we had a situation here where the soccer had lost their first playoff game at home, and there was, a, there was an opportunity for the soccer to actually lose the championship, which we had never seen before here in San Diego. Well, this team went on and uh, goes out to Minnesota in game number six. And it's jam-packed in Minnesota, the Met, uh, the Met, I believe they called it at the time. And uh, this gentleman to my left stood on his head in goal, and I believe made a save off the goal line that turned into a counterattack the other way, and the soccer scored the game winner. And they came back here and sold out, I believe, the arena in a couple of hours. And on Memorial Day night, they won their fifth straight championship. And uh, me as a 15-year-old kid uh, could not be happy with it. So when we thought about it, we said, you know what, let's do this instead of just doing a reunion night of sports and you know these guys are getting up there now and have them play for eight minutes or whatever at the press conference or excuse me at halftime. Let's go about honoring these guys the right way. And so we're doing our best to honor these guys the right way. To my right, um, for a number of years, uh, legend blocks in major indoor soccer league as well as the NASL is number 13 Guy Newman. And, uh, and Guy, I believe that's some part of the outdoor soccer as well, is that correct? Yeah, I think in uh, 1987. Yeah, three years of the outdoor soccer and, and uh, then indoors was just an animal in front of the goalkeepers. Uh, in goal, uh, which again this soccer team has great history of great goalkeepers. You go back to outdoor, Alan Mayer started here outdoors with Baltimore Gross, and then indoors as well, and then Zoli the goalie showed up with Jim Gorsick, and number one, Jim, uh, excuse me, Dalton Jones is right to my left. <laughs> Julie B, um, if you get a chance to take a look at some of the highlights of Julie B outdoor, you'd be amazed at his uh, amazing ball skills that he has. And he's not Hispanic, folks. Uh, as a lot of soccer fans seem to think, Hispanics have a great ball control. Well, Julie B is not that. And Julie B was one of the greatest players that soccer have ever had. And really, during the early days, was the most uh, famous player that soccer has ever had. And uh, I know Nick Canepa wrote about this many years ago, called it the house that B built. Uh, but Julie already had a name going in indoors. And, uh, 22, double deuce, triple E, the one and only Julie B. John DeMont was the first one to call you that, right? And, uh, you know, John, like, like a lot of the old soccer, is living in Florida these days. Probably next to Ron Newman, who knows? Uh, and then there was the captain, and before him was Cad Dana, but uh, as that transition uh, came about, Brian Quinn became the heart and soul of the San Diego Soccer. He went on to coach the Soccer, and of 
reports the prominent role here in the soccer community in San Diego. Brian Quinn, number 14. <laughs> Sports arena here and, and, and see it, it coming walking down the tunnel there, it brought back a lot of memories. And uh, it, it, you know, you see as things gone by when the soccer has sort of disappeared for a little while, now they're coming back. And I, and I know personally, I know the rest of my teammates here agree that it's great to be involved in the history and, and see the young players continuing on, on the history of the soccer. I don't know what definition of the word legend is, but I'm the word legend, but we really, really enjoy playing, enjoy winning. We put um, one season on the line and then we'll go on to the next season. And there's a lot of um, players on the soccer today's team that remind me of the, the group that we had, a uh, good attacking players who put the ball in the, the net, Paul, Aaron Seaton, Susie, Craig Charles, uh, Chica Smuna, you know, the defenders at the back, capable of playing with the ball. So there's a lot of similarities in the style of play and our uh, the games play, a lot of great attack maps for the current soccer. And it's, it's kind of what we had, the people who could score, the people who could defend. We have lots of good players. And this team in soccer size is now today, it's a lot of good players. So uh, I'm looking forward to the 29th season. We joined us, I think, I remember the game in Chicago. We got beat by Chicago, we were one of the best teams in indoor soccer. Um, we need to drive a lot of heart into this team. It's like this building. We have a hard base bit. Whenever you when you give up, you stop, you're gonna make the girls a little bit out here and there. And uh, it was you know, we got to know me, we moved together, I'm telling you what's going on here, stuff like that. And uh, so I did what we always decided to work on it. So that was a pleasure, we had a great time here. I think we made a connection with San Diego because we were sort of blue color boards. Everybody came from some place. I worked like a dog from 69 till 75. These boys don't know what the work means. They never work in their life. It's fucking easy. Someone gives them money, they take the ball. I work in the shipyard on Manson Ranch. I mean, I can have stories for you all morning long. That's what I'm doing. They never work. Yeah, it's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming out. And we'll make a big uh, deal with Joe and John. I want to call you guys the JJs. This is fantastic to bring these memories back. Thank you.